Good morning everyone, welcome to another vlog here on the World of Coasters. Today you join me and Louise back at one of our favourite <laughs> European know. destinations, the Efteling. We were actually here only back in May on our European mega trip. Um, however, we decided to come back here as a, a, well, it was Louise's birthday last week on National Roller Coaster Day. Mm -hmm. uh, but we booked this the week after. So we're here for two days at the Efteling theme park, we're staying off site uh, in the town of Den Bosch. Uh, we got here via Eurostar in another video if you want to see that I'll put, put it somewhere um, but yeah we, we really wanted to get back here we've also bolted on Toverland yeah which wasn't planned but, but the, we just wanted to we just wanted to go back there it looks like it's gonna be a washout on that day but the weather in the Efteling looks absolutely grand uh, so yeah we, we use public transport to get here we came here from our house on a train to London via Eurostar to Amsterdam and then a train to Den Bosch and then a bus to, yeah. to here, so yeah, total public transport from our house. It's weird, it's it? really weird because we last didn't even drive to the train station. We walked there, yeah, so. yeah. So literally, literally like last, got into a car when we came here in May. Obviously, I had the car with me. Um, yeah, mega excited to get into the park. It actually looks quieter than it was when we came in May. It, like I've been keeping an eye on the queue times. Everything's yeah. always below an hour here. They've got really good operations. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was much busier. But I don't know whether they're filling up the back car park first, like last time. Yeah, Efteling is an absolutely gorgeous theme park. It has some of the best theming in the world, in my opinion. Definitely some of the best dark rides in the world. Uh, Symbolica and uh, Drumvlacht is right up there. A lot of work going on at the park this year. They're in the process yeah, of building a hotel. Amazing. Yeah, so they're building a new hotel called the Grand Hotel off to the side. It's opening next year. Uh, next year. <laughs> Dance Macabre is also being um, installed. Now, the one thing I love about filming Efteling vlogs is you guys are really interactive with them. Like, I've had lots of people give me advice, tell me stuff. And that's uh, what makes it worth it, Yeah, it? yeah, definitely. Like, it's not so much the views or anything like that, or the it's likes, the inter it's the inter interaction inter and like, the suggestions and yeah. recommendations from you. So like, I, when we came here, I was like, oh yeah, Dance Macabre is Spook Slot getting refurbished. No, it's been knocked down. It's actually a Intamin. Um, it's a new Intamin like, interactive ride. Well, not interactive. It's like a dome theatre with thingies on it i'll put a picture in now i don't know the model name but it looks incredible and i can't wait to get on it hopefully next year uh since we came here last they have actually opened a little um spook slot themed shop mm. they burnt down like pub or tavern uh which is part of the story because you know efteling everything has a story so uh we'll have a look at that but yeah we're gonna start the day on um your favorite it's going to be the Flying Dutchman. Like I can't even pronounce that one yeah. in, in Dutch, so I'm not even going to bother. A few of them I'll give a go and butcher. And uh, yeah, so we're just coming up to the absolutely spectacular entrance of the Efteling. Like I say, it definitely takes the cake for one of the best entrances in the world. It's just so iconic, like this thatched roof building, all wooden with the big stained glass windows behind. Uh, so yeah, let's get in the park, guys, and we'll see you inside. Here we are, signage for the Grand Hotel, which is literally right next to the entrance. We will have to come here at some point. We love staying on site after yeah, we don't we know? There's something else. So you'll get a lovely view over the lake and Feta Morgana, which is one of the dark rides. Now this is one of those parks where they hold you at the entrance points until the beginning of the day. So we've got about 15 minutes to wait until they open up. When it comes to theming, the Efteling is one of those parks that does it right. It's easily in the top five, top ten theme parks in the world for me. Um, we haven't done a lot of theme parks. I mean, you, know. you say that. We've <laughs> done nearly 50 now. Um, so yeah, we're going to walk up towards Symbolica because it's the most grand entrance. We could go in through here, but it does seem quieter, doesn't it, than last time? Yeah, but it is early doors, isn't it? So yeah, so... Early, many, early doors? Early, early days. doors. Um, How many people are going to come yeah, and stay so, late? So the park hours are actually 10 till 10 today and tomorrow. Um, the intention is we have the full day today and tomorrow, yeah, that has been lowered. Yeah. And then tomorrow we might come in a bit later, have a bit of a lane because it is all go, go, go. Yeah. Louise was just talking about the uh, construction fence of this where they've got like a model of the hotel. Got all the foundations in by the look of it now, so hopefully they'll be going vertical soon. We'll also be looking at the fairy tale forest in full. Mm -hmm. Be that today or tomorrow. As you guys have been very kind and told me the like how to find the the, the full route yeah. because whenever we've been through, we kind of just wandered. And yeah, apparently we'll there is a, a method to following the full route via some bricks or via a certain entrance by someone said Sleeping Beauty's Castle. Mm -hmm. 
We're not at Disneyland, are we? I don't know what we're doing for dinner today, but we are going to the Pancake House. What would it be yeah. without a visit to the Pancake House? You've got, go. You've, got go. You've got to. The pancakes here are amazing. So yeah, let's wander on down to Symbolica uh, towards one of the entrance areas. Right, so we're going not the direct route to the Flying Dutchman. We decided to peel off the main path. So back down that way is uh, Baron 1898, obviously the crowds go that way. So we've dived off, we're going to cross over this bridge and kind of approach from the swinging ship they have. Like I said, it may not be the most direct route, but it might be faster because there's not as many people and we can walk at pace. But yeah, as a scenic park goes, this is like Alton Towers, eat your heart out. So like Alton Towers is renowned as a beautiful park. It's got the grounds, the gardens, Garden, yeah. and it is, it's really, really nice Alton Towers. But like this place, they just go to the next level because the gardens are the whole park essentially. Yeah, you're like, so you can just see behind me. Um, you're into it, aren't you? You're oh yeah, around. it is literally, like if I pan the camera around now, have a look at this. Probably the closest thing I'd say that looks like this is uh, Hyder Park's lake area with their boat ride, very similar looking to this. Looks like an homage to the Flying Fish at Fort Park here. <laughs> Thought we'd come around this way, just as a bit more relaxing, isn't it? Yeah. Obviously when we came in May we never looked around here because we didn't have time. It is the wonderful thing about coming to these parks for two days, three days even. Um, you can actually take your time to enjoy it because it's going to be busy today, it's the middle of the summer holidays. But, you know, we've been here in May so we don't feel like we need to rush. We know what we want to do, we're just, we're just going to do it as, as and when we please. And we want to look, look in the museum a bit. Oh yeah, down the other side of the park. And there's a few attractions we've never been on, like Villa Volta. We've never done the Madhouse here, um, which is apparently one of the best. We didn't do Vogel Rock last time, I have been on it. But yeah, it would just be nice to do that. So, so we come round to the back of the park now. I don't actually know what this area is called. Um, it's one thing that I don't know about Eflin too much, but they've got a python stage up here just behind this tree, but we'll get a closer look at it. Yeah, it looks to be using scaled down track. I don't know whether that's actually real, no, it couldn't be real track, but have a look at that, that's really cool. So yeah, one other thing to note, they've actually got the Summer of Efteling, I think it's called, going on at the moment, uh, where there's various stage shows, entertainment, that sort of thing, all around the park. Yeah, they've got a few zones. I know there's like a giant uh, Feta Morgana puppet walking around. Oh my gosh. Uh, Max and Morty, uh, Moritz are out. This um, is cool. But yeah, so this, yeah, this was built new since we last came, big old play park. It's just good for capacity, but have a look at it. The theming is amazing. Got Python up here, which is one of the, old, well, the oldest roller coaster in the park, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Retract back in 2018. I would like to get Louise on this because it is really smooth now. And it's the only coaster in this park you haven't been on. We'll see. Maybe if it's open later, because currently it's closed. Joris and the Drac also, the GCI Woody, Woody's, the dueling ones. Uh, so they were closed last time we came here, but these are absolute belters of Woody's. Yeah, I really love the people going for the Flying Dutchman. So we haven't beat the crowd, but hopefully the queue won't be too long. Obviously, as you well know, we can film on the rides in this park. Uh, probably won't be a very good pov on here, but one thing I will put out there, I've been having trouble with my GoPro recently, haven't I, Lou? Um, I'm hoping it's not a major issue, uh, but if pov's cut out or we don't have pov's on certain rides, I want to apologise. I would like to replace the camera soon, but I'm not exactly in a position to buy an Insta360 X3 <laughs> quite yet, because they're really expensive. Uh, but yeah, we do have the GoPro with us on the secure chest rig. From the Amsterdam dungeons, look at the flying Dutchman there, to this. Um, but yeah, one thing we really like about the Efteling is there's no massive sign saying the flying Dutchman. It's kind of just, you just find the entrance yourself, but it's really obvious that this is a ride. Yeah, the queue is queuing, but it's obviously filling. So last time we queued, we queued for all the outside bit, and that took about 15 minutes. So hopefully this will be about 10, 15 minutes when we get in the queue. Straight inside, I do like this camera for its low light efficiency, like it's very dark in here. There's some good effects in this uh, area, obviously. Still not in, actually at the end of the queue yet, we're still moving. So we're through the portrait, into the underground corridor, where they've got a really nice flame effect in here. I don't think we're going to be here long enough to see it going. <laughs>
like it helps me raise an enzyme. <laughs> So we've just come off of the Flying Dutchman there, I only waited about 15 minutes for that one. Really do enjoy it. So it's um, manufactured by a company called Comeback, which actually make, um, make restraints and safety systems for coasters. I believe it's the only one they've made. I, I think it's the only coaster that they've manufactured from scratch. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm sure I'll be corrected. So yeah, the Efteling is world famous for its sucky bins for paper recycling. Uh, we have just seen Python running, uh, which like I said, I would like to give a bash later. It's still not open currently. We're going to head round towards um, George and the Dragon, which is a dueling GCI Woody. So like I say, last time when we came in May, we didn't get to go on because it was down for like 90% of the day. Yeah, as you can see here, this uh, coaster used to be a Vacoma, well it is a Vacoma coaster still, but it's had a retrack. So you can see the old Vacoma style track at the top. And then just down here, just before the first inversion, you can see the change in track. Now, I don't know the manufacturer of this track, but it had to be commissioned, obviously, by Vacoma. But it is smooth as butter now. Um, this is like a pretty cool coaster. It's just pretty basic layout, not very long. Double, lit, double vertical loop, a couple of corkscrews into a helix and down. But uh, yeah, they seem to be having some troubles with it because they are. They did just run one, but it's stuck on the head. Oh, he's George and the Dragon. You excited for this one, though? Yeah. This one is good. I do like a nice GCI Woody. Joris Endrak, which translates to George and the Dragon, is a dueling GCI wooden coaster, I believe, from 2016. Uh, it does say up here, so I'll soon correct myself. Um, but yeah, it's, it's brilliant. It's, I think this was the second GCI we went on after the Wicker Man. Yes. Um, and yeah, you know, the, the second of many. But yeah, it's had some uh, work on the track too. It's actually got some steel hybrid track there now. So there was a date on here. 2010. Christ, I was well out. But yeah, this one's really cool because at the end the flagpole goes either way to the winner. So they race each other. Uh, it was advertised in a 10 minute queue on the app, so we'll soon find out. So before this coaster stood, there used to be an old wooden coaster. I'm not sure in the manufacturer, but it was called Pegasus. And it was removed and refurbished, or rebuilt rather, should I say, as the George and the Dragon Jordan coaster it goes now. Yeah, the queue goes through like a swamp area. The theme is just immaculate here. The thing is, they have this giant dragon uh, animatronic over here that actually spurts fire and water. Uh, I don't know whether it's currently working. It hasn't worked whenever we've been past this. It's kind of like away from the queue out in the ride area, so don't really get to like appreciate it as much as you could just about making out behind there so yeah the queue goes through the bar and then you've got the coca-cola vending machines here all feet in still which is really cool to see and then yeah it looks like we're basically going to be walking onto this one by the looks of it obviously we're going to be in the jeweling coaster uh, eats up the crowds there's the post at the end so the blue one that one so here we go george and the dragon So here we go, right, two of the day, water slide, oh, George and the Dragon. Who's going to win, Lou? Fire. Oh, wait, what's that? <laughs> I'll say that's that? us. <laughs> it's a bags on ride, and my bag is definitely crammed in there. Dragon. Yeah, the Dragon is down there. We are row five on this one, so no wait for the front on this, but yeah, it's still a good view. Here we go, let the best train win. Awesome.
there we go, we won, so the tapestries fall down. That there is a really fun wooden coaster. There's something about a coaster with jewels, isn't there? Like complete strangers, you're like competing yeah. with them. It's just so much and, fun. And, and just like how close the trains get to each other. Like our train run by quite a landslide, but sometimes it's much tighter. I just tighter. think they, they really work, even with a language barrier. It's like obvious what's happening and everyone just gets involved. Yeah, it's good fun. Uh, anyway, we're going to go over to the train station now, which there's two train stations in this park. One at this end of the park and one over by Drumvlucht, which is train flight. Uh, so we're going to take the train around the other side, because I think this will be the quieter station. It's just in the shadow of Python, which still isn't operational at the moment. Hopefully it's operational later today, Fade and that will be on it tomorrow. So into the train station here, uh, which is doubles up as a restaurant, and I think there's a shop in here as well. Uh, but yeah, this was really grand. <laughs> yeah, I love this. They've got um, they've got various bits of theming in here, but just look at the level of detail. This is like, beautiful. Isn't this, it? Could, this could pl class as a real train station. I think if you go over here and you ding the bell, something happens. Oh. oh you dinged it. Oh, you can't see because the. Oh, no, it's lighting up. Oh, it's one of those things. What are they called? The Zotrope. Zotrope. Maybe if I come around the other side. Oh, you can't. It's all blocked off. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now it's up to speed. Coca Cola sponsored. The one thing to bear in mind while we're just in here, they do actually sell Coke Freestyle mugs here. Nine euros fifty for one, nine euros for two, and or per. Uh, yeah, so cool. I think we might get one of these tomorrow. So yeah, nine oh nine euros fifty for one, nine euros each for two, and eight euros fifty for three each. So you get a bit of saving. Yeah, we're gonna get the train hopefully. I just had a whistle, so I don't want the train going. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this, this little cafe area, so there's a little delicatessen in here which actually does some really nice sandwiches. I just really love the theme in here, it's brilliant. So they run every 20 minute, uh, 25 minutes, which we haven't seen one in the past 10, so hopefully. And there's a bit of So yeah, there's two stations in this path. We're up here currently, and we're going to go around to here. But you love this train, don't you? I haven't been on it. Not since this trip, you have been there before. So a really pleasant uh, train ride there. I'd probably say the other part is more scenic. Yeah. Uh, that kind of goes around the back way, but still some great little shots. Uh, we're now at the bottom of the park, or the older part of the park. We've got Drumvlucht here, which is the Dream Flight ride. This is incredible, isn't it? Apparently it's only on a 15 minute queue, so we'll do that now. Also got Villa Volta. Uh, there's also the show, which I wouldn't mind seeing at some oh, point. The yeah. <laughs> She's referring to uh, a Snapchat I took when the horse has its bum on fire. I said when your uh, horse likes a vindaloo. But yeah, as the well, summer of Efteling, they've the got the uh, extra feeling in. But yeah, they've got different merch, some shops up, little pop-ups. But yeah, this is a beautiful area of the park, like I said, definitely one of the older. But here is the next ride, Drumvlacht. So yeah, another ride where they don't need a big sign at the entrance. Obviously you have that little board at the side, but I feel most other theme parks would have a big sign off to the side, like Dream Flight. Um, now this has the cattle pen of death, as I call it, because it is quite a daunting cattle pen, but it moves quite yeah. fast, doesn't it? Advertising a 15 minute queue, um, we should be on it quite quickly. It does eat the crowds, this one. So as I said last time, yeah, the cattle pen of death, they're not using this half. They are using this half, which still looks quite long, but it does move very quickly. I'd hate to clue you in all this. Oh, 
so we manage the bags of front row, which you get a view regardless, but it's just when you're heading in this direction. Um, but yeah, enjoy the ride of from room block. We just come off of uh, Dream Flight there, or Dream Flight, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, and I really like that one, it is a solid ride, isn't it? Though? Definitely one of the best the, the ones like, here. Little girls like it, don't they? Because it's very whimsical. Very whimsical and fairy tale. Yeah. I love the bit at the end where you spiral down yeah, the huge clever. showroom right to the bottom. So we're going to go on Villa Volta next, which is actually one of the few rides we actually haven't been on in this park. We've been here four times, well, I've been here four times now, you've been here three. Uh, multiple days obviously each time but yeah we've never done it because it's just up at home a madhouse but we've been meaning to do it it's not overly busy so yeah it's going to be up next it's just over the other side of this plaza which ooh, there's a ferry up high in the swing now So we only waited five minutes, if that, to get on Villa Volta. Um, so quick facts about that one. It's the first Vacoma Madhouse ever built. 1996 it opened. It seems to be really well up kept, runs really well, has some good theming in it. How does that one not jutter and shake you? But <laughs> I don't know. Why because it was it, built in like 2018. Well, the one in Norton Towers has been down. They said that it's not going to open this season. So, you know, Hex is a brilliant one, but 
I did enjoy that. The only thing I'd say is because it's an older ride, clearly the Efteling have become more international since. Yeah, definitely. It would be nice if they had like subtitles somewhere on the wall. I think they do a refurb of that. Just, you know, something like on a book or something that like projects in English because we couldn't follow the story, which I know we're in a Dutch park, but you know, normally they're really accommodating with that sort of thing. Um, but from what I got, it's a cursed family and nothing, they're not allowed to rest. Um, which is why that little grumpy animatronic was being so grumpy, basically. Uh, but yeah, I, I did enjoy How it. How come he was resting though? Because he was asleep. Yeah, in between the cycle, he went to sleep. Yeah. But yeah, did you enjoy that one? Well, I'd probably say I wouldn't rush to go back on it, mainly because you've been on one for kind of mad house, you've been in the mall. Um, yeah. But yeah, because you couldn't follow the story, it was a bit more complicated. But, it. but it, I still enjoyed it, it was really well themed. Um, so we're heading towards the like, it's not the fairy tale forest, it's more like the older area of the park where they've got some kiddie rides. There is a show over here that I said about earlier. I have to have a look when that is. Uh, see if it's running today. So let's see that. But yeah, we're gonna venture into here. Louise wants to go to her favourite machine that dispenses pins yeah. and get a couple of those. So let's go in deeper to this area of the park that I don't know the name of. So you can really tell this is the older area of the park. It's much more like family orientated obviously more about the theming and buildings so there's a little village through there of like a snail type ride up high little monorail thing that's got a 20 minute mm -hmm. queue currently get your princess dresses all in here costumes but yeah this is just very very cute this area it's like everything has been like made in house by the looks of it and uh, it's just this is theming that you cannot replicate this is authentic theming get your ice creams from here i've got the old paper bins over there we're heading over to one of the machines. So we worked out that basically these vending machines along here don't all dispense the same things. But there's one, which we always visit, that dispenses pins because he makes them for them. So here he is, it's the blacksmith. Two euros for a little pin. The great thing about these is they show you a little show. I don't even know what that is. I don't know either. Has he got a straw? So yeah, we're going into the Efteling Museum, which we went through last time. It's just really cool because it's a bit of an archive for them. Um, but yeah, through here, they've got various bits from the history of the Efteling theme park, which is pretty cool. I might see Merlin do something like this, but they never would. There is proper old school theme in here. Let's just have a look around. This map shows you what the Efteling has to offer and where everything can be found. It will help you to plan your visit and make the most of your time. Yeah, the part was the much red smaller. marking light on the map marks the spot where you are now. Ah, In the building behind you is the information office. So it's much Besides different. finding out about bus and the train connections, ah. So the entrance, currently, I'm kind of speaking over this guy now, but it would be down here somewhere, the entrance, and obviously Baron would be about here somewhere. Should you lose or find a Yeah, quite interesting, you can have it in various languages. And as Louise was saying, a massive part of his head. So as we continue on, we go through the concept uh, area, which is where they have a lot of their concept for the ride. So here's one for Symbolica, for example, the observatory. And we come out of it's just so cool to see one of these. Louise already knows what my favourite one is. There's a concept from yeah. Baron 1898 just it's along so here. Cool. And uh, yeah, the bunny. It is cool. Like honestly, it's not many old, parts old do this. Photos, like. And the old python. Here's the one I really like. This concept art of Baron. I really wish they sold this as a print because I would buy this in a heartbeat. Another one, we got the centerpiece in uh, Polly's kitchen, which is the pancake house here. And they're pretty true to what they've drawn, aren't they? Like, there might be sm no, slight the things. Belt wasn't That's stopped working, so they've actually, it doesn't move at all now. But yeah, so it's only one bit of feed that isn't working. And then through into the next room, 
we have a bit of a history of the founding fathers of um, Efteling, which I don't know much about, but um, I imagine it's this guy here. So in one of the final rooms here, or the first, depending on which way you go in, got some of the old merch from we the We came park. in this way, I think, Yeah, last we did. Time. I think this is the way they intend you to come in, because it kind of like shows some adverts and such. Yeah, we got these old statues, uh, little figures of like the mascot Pardo, so I would, I'd love that. Honestly, that's such a cool little statue. Uh, yeah. The uh, TV shows old adverts, it's always just said long neck up here. <laughs> Such a cool uh, mascot. Uh, the mascot. Yeah, this TV is called showing old adverts, documentaries of art. It's just a cool little thing to have in this park, I think. Over by the area for Carnival Festival, we have another summer themed area. So, yeah, we got the Zuma Strand, which I don't know what that pronounces for, but it is, well, I imagine Summer Beach, maybe? That would be obvious. It's all themed up to the Carnival Festival. We've got the surfboards here, which one of them's lost their nose? They've put a little plaster on it, Oh, So it may be a temporary area, but they've done the ground out fully. They've laid path. This was all being made when we came last time, wasn't it, though? Because I remember being up in the road asking about it. So, yeah, have a look at this. They've got a little, like, play area. It is really cool. Cool. Yeah, it's like a beach area, yeah. little play parks. Obviously you can't film too much because it is a kids play area, but it's still pretty cool I think. So over here we got the Sinbad themed teacup ride. We're going to be going on Vogel Rock next, which is a ride we didn't do when we last visited back in May. It's a Vekoma indoor coaster. Can't really remember much about this one. Uh, no, 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 that's space, you're thinking of Space Mountain. But yeah, this is the newest edition. This used to be Monsieur Cannibal, and it's now themed to Sinbad. Uh, it's just a teacup, but it doesn't look really cool. So here we are, the grand entrance to Vogel Rock. Again, no like title saying it's Vogel Rock, but it's really obvious what it is. You may not see it as a roller coaster, but you definitely know there's some form of attraction here. So you enter the ride through a bird's legs, which you need to be careful how you word that. <laughs> but the um, the entrance and exit is through the same area, just kind of goes off to the left. So don't know what we'll be able to see on this one. I've got the GoPro, but you won't be able to see a lot because it is in the dark. So yeah, even the older ones, I think this was late 90s, maybe 1997, 98. Uh, still got immense level of theming. Uh, got quite right up through the ceiling. It's just really cool. And it's air conditioned in here, which is much appreciated. And it's a giant egg. So, only a five minute wait there for Vogel Rock. It is not feeling like a summer holidays day here. Front row. Yeah, we did get front row. Um, obviously, the POV, I, I have to review whether it's worth putting in because it's just darkness. It is very dark, full stop. Maybe they'll just be a second. But yeah, it's like, I don't know, what, like, the park is busy, isn't it, though? I think it. I think it's just so big, it, and it's got so much to do. That it just eats up the crowds. I mean, because we haven't been around Barron and like. No, they, they've really... still got half hour queues. But yeah. I mean, it's got an atmosphere. But we're just walking on rice. Bearing in mind it's one o'clock, we got our lunch reservation at the, the um, pancake house in half an hour. So we're going to go on the pagode, which is the flying island, and uh, then go for that. That'd be nice. Maybe get some bollocks done after after lunch. But so far, I am having an excellent day. I love the Efteling. I think the little t the little taste we got in May just it made us so want to come sad back. To leave and I do feel like last time was rough. Yeah, so we're gonna go on the pagoda, which is just around here, and then we got the the boats. But the boats take about twenty minutes to complete the cycle. Uh, but listen, we'll definitely do this at some point. This is like my after lunch <laughs> chill out ride. But yeah, we just missed the pagoda that's going up now, but we'll uh, get on the next one. It just takes a few minutes. It's lunch time. It doesn't take long to get going on this one, but like I say, you get some beautiful views of the park from up here. It is a heavily wooded area. That's why I liken it to Alton Towers in a way. It's much more heavily themed than Alton Towers, but... Well, they have the height restriction. They can't go above the tree line, so... I think we're above the tree line now. Yeah, you get some gorgeous views. Look, they've done all the tops now of the Efteling well, Hotel. Not anymore. So they're now gold. Last time we were here, they'd just done one of them. Gold now. 
also got the um, little summer beach down here. So the back there we got Vogel Rock, and obviously the Efteling Hotel. What's going here? I don't know, so this is used for like events, but I could see it one day being used for a ride. See all that is just temporary over there, which I find mad because they put sand down and everything. But yeah, down below now we've got Symbolic coming into view. The Pancake House, That's which we'll be going to next. There as well. It is. They've got a lot of like, open spaces, but the park is big enough. Over here we've got the entrance building, and then eventually you'll be able to see the new hotel the as well. Yeah. And Symbolic. Dance Macabre is currently in those trees. We will have a look because you can go up to the construction fences. And they have got a little eatery. Um, look at that, I never noticed that last time. You really time. never noticed no, that, so that's always been that. there. Uh, I thought it was solar panels on top of them. It might be solar panels, I can't really tell from here. Yes, the show building, so all the symbolic is in there, which is quite impressive. It's not a very big show building. I'm yeah. sorry, that is really cool. It is a spectacular one, this. We're already going around, we didn't really get a full, full go around. There you go, there's the Baron 1898, George of the Dragon, Python's running now. <laughs> Yeah, we will have to go on Baron at some point. It's the most popular coaster in the park, but it is a good one, isn't it? Like, it is I'd like to wait for the front of this one. I feel like the last time we waited so long, it kind of took shine up. It's definitely quieter today, which is weird because we're in the middle of the summer holidays. We're going down now, and we'll go around to the Pancake House. So after the pagoda, we're now down on the ground again, and we're around the back of the Symbolica building. I'm surprised that's not a water feature, a, you know, water cascading down. Yeah, it might be actually, because there is holes in the top, it would make sense. Uh, but yeah, the Symbolica show building is in full sight because of its position. I imagine we'll be doing this one after lunch, but it is lunchtime now. Yes. So although they recommend you have reservations, you can turn up. So there's a queue on the left for reservations and a queue on the right for if you're just turning up. This is a fake menu. Yeah, as I say, it's not a real menu. But yeah, this is a beautiful little place to eat and you can get sweet and savoury pancakes, which I had a savoury one last time. I might have a savoury one again because it is lunchtime after all, so let's get inside. So yeah, we came here back in May, but it is spectacular. The theming in here is immense. Like, we got a seat in the centre with the oven, which every half an hour or so, this does a little music show, doesn't it, Lo? Uh, but you get your like choice of pancakes here, uh, which I've just ordered the drink. Louise is getting a bit of lemon, I'm getting a beer. Um, I'm going to go for the savoury pancake, the chicken shawarma I went for last time. It is expensive, but it's good. What are you going to get, Lou? What are we talking about? What we're going to order? Well, I'm actually going to get a starter because his is the most it's expensive one. Food, yeah. So I'm either going to get the tomato soup or the soup at the moment, whatever yeah, it nice. is. And then I might actually get this. The this one looks really nice. Okay. Pancake with crispy waffles, white chocolate and sugar. Okay, fair enough. Nice. nice. So yeah, let's uh, order up and have our food. So Louise has decided to go for a starter because I went for the most expensive pancake on the menu. It's a vegetable soup. It's like mm. a minestrone, I yeah. want to say. Uh, it's quite watery, but it looks and smells really good. What do you think of it, though? So it looks a bit hot. <laughs> Mm, very vegetable. So she gets chow down to that, and the next thing you'll see are the pancakes. So the waffles have turned, not the waffles, the pancakes turned up, and I'm jealous of yours though. So many strawberries, a huge bowl of cream in a wafer bowl. And there's like weird custard And then I think there's something inside it as well by the looks of it. Yeah, that's the custard thing. Oh my, my god. My one here, a savoury pancake with a chicken shawarma on it. I mean, this tastes amazing. So I go chow down. I need to film that. And uh, then let you know what we think afterwards. So we've just come out from what I can say was a really nice pancake. It never lets us down. It can be a bit pricey. Uh, bearing in mind we had, so you had a like, soup starter with uh, a pat of sweet pancake. Mm -hmm. I had a savory pancake, the most expensive one on the menu. I had a beer, the beer was six euros for a pint, which was quite expensive. And your drink was about 3.50, I think. So in total it was 41 euros, which is a bit pricey, but um, I think it's well worth it. It's a nice little treat on the trip uh, to visit, but it's well worth visiting in my opinion. If you're coming to the Efteling, it's part of the experience to get a pancake. And don't feel like you can't try a savoury one, because I'd always try a sweet before, hadn't I? Yeah. I just fancied a savoury one for lunch, and they are so good. 
Anyway, up next is going to be a Symbolica, the trackless dark ride. Right, so it's advertising a 30 minute queue now. We have just been sitting down watching the queue and it has died off. It was right out here about five minutes ago. So I reckon about 20 minutes. It's normally quite, a, you know, ease the crowds up. But what we do, we're doing the music tour, Lou, because we did... Uh, we're doing what we didn't do last time. Well, that was the music tour, because we did the treasure tour, which is the disappointing run. <laughs> The heroes no, it's is not. Like a, it's just, it's just the a tiny scene that's different. It's like mirrors everywhere, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we've done the heroes tour, it's our favourite. And um, we haven't done the music one since obviously we came last in 20, well, 2019 for me and 2018 for Lou. Yeah, the queue's definitely not half hour from here, it's died right off. <laughs> Die hard. <laughs> Welkom in Symbolica. U gaat zo dadelijk op audiëntie bij onze koning die zich hierboven bevindt. <laughs> Wat is dit? Alle toverwinkels. Hallo allemaal. Paradoes, onze koninklijke tovernaar. Wat een saaie boel. Wat, wat, wat doe jij hier? Transito, culto, fabulu. Trage treden, open u. Thank <laughs> you. 
just come off of Symbolica after what was it about a 20 minute wait? I'd say not, all in. Not even. It, it wasn't too bad. It's like it's one of those where the queue waits because of the pre-show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy that you one. Get through it, you've just yeah. Got the um, three queues and we were right at the front of our group, yeah. so we didn't have to wait that long when we got down the stairs. Uh, went on the music tour as you saw there. Really like that one. The hero one is still my favourite. But it's also the most popular one. Yes, so definitely. Is it worth waiting? So green is music, blue is hero, and red is treasure. And if you want my advice, don't go for the treasure one. It's pretty disappointing. Uh, but the overall ride, it's only the ending that really is any different. Yeah, I was going to say. It's most anyway, we're now going to have a walk down to the front of the park. We're going to walk past the construction of Dance Macabre, uh, which also is by the 4D Cinema Fabri, 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 Fabri something. Um, Fabula or something like that. Um, so yeah, we're just going to have a walk down here. It's just through those gates over there. So let's have a look at how the construction of Dance Macabre is going. So yeah, this area is currently only open for Fabula. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, which yeah, we don't know. It's a 4D cinema of some description. I imagine it's one of those shows that doesn't have any like text in it. But yeah, here's the new for 2024. So Dance Macabre, the entrance for Spooks Lot used to be this tower here and they're basically re so that's been ripped out they've demolished the building this is totally being rebuilt and it's a new intamin uh ride uh with motion sense you know all motion based it moves it's, it's i think it's a world's first um uh, but it's gonna be opening in 2024 we will have to be back for it i love the 3d effects on the dance macabre statue with the green eyes that actually light up it's pretty cool so yeah, the three little pigs building this are a bit scared of this one. So here is a Fabula here. Do you want to go on this one? A ten minute wait? Yeah. I don't know whether we'll be able to understand it. I, like I said, I doubt it's going to be... Camera up there. Yeah, that's not the time. Oh no, that isn't. That's for surveying. Uh, we've never done this one as well. I didn't even realise they had this until we last visited. So we know that there's a restaurant for Fabula, which is like a self-serve like buffet place, I think. Uh, but yeah, we'll give this a bash, see whether it's any good, and then head round to Petal Morgana. We're going to be able to see some more of, not spook slot, Dance Macabre's construction, which you know they're really going all out on. It looks like it's going to be fantastic. Can't wait to get back here next season to ride this, hopefully. Because last time we visited, we, we did have a five year gap between yeah. our previous visits. So. Yeah, but then this year we've been twice. Yes. Yeah, with the theming Efteling are known for should be really good this it's actually quite weird that you can see this much into the construction site right guys so what would this be in a 4d cinema there being no filming in the building so we'll see you afterwards oh, 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 here we go Fabula there was a short 10 minute show, a weird little pre-show, but it was really quite good wasn't it? Yeah. It doesn't use any form of language, so there's no language barrier, and then you come out through this amazingly themed play area and a restaurant. So we, I knew about the restaurant being here, so you've got the Savannah bar there, which is just like quick service, uh, you know, grab your food. Might be worth having a look what they offer here, and there's a little souvenir shop, but yeah. You know, I thought it was really quite good, considering yeah. we've never done it before. Uh, and these little play areas are just uh, brilliant. Like, you can't get a better theme like that. It reminds me very much of the Rainforest Cafe. So over here they do burgers, salads, something to bear in mind for later actually, because we do need a light meal after our pancake. Uh, you can actually pay here by the looks of it. It's not, it's not working. Oh wait, there you go. So you can order on here. And it's a bit like just a, a McDonald's menu, really, but with a few more varieties. Meal boxes, burgers, soups. Not too badly priced, actually. I think, yeah, here you go, menus. Burger menu, 13 euros. I mean, for a theme park, it's not too bad. Uh, we've got wraps, all sorts. is not too bad. So, next up, we're heading over to the area of Thousand and One Nights, Feta Morgana which is a dark ride, boat ride, um, through like A Thousand and One Nights, the Tales of A Thousand and One Nights. Uh, it's, a, it's a great ride, this is a little bit odd, isn't it, Lou? Yeah, you have to go under this man's legs. Yeah, this weird, like, genie, I want to say. Uh, but for the summer festival thing, they do have a giant puppet of that um, mm. character. 
out moving around. So we'll have a look at that because I can see it from here, but you can't really see it on the camera because it's behind the, the uh, trees. Uh, but yeah, beautiful facade for this. And over here is where they have the nighttime spectacular, which for the first time we'll be able to see it in the dark with all the lights. I bet it looks much nicer with the lights as uh, the park closes at 10 today. So there is the giant puppet thing. It's very strange, but it, it actually moves around the land. Yeah, I was just looking at that there, down there, lit to nice too. So the entrance to Fata Morgana is that giant tower over there. And uh, here is, what, I don't even know what it is. I'm gonna say a genie if I had to guess. It's very strange. It is quite impressive to see, and like I said, it does move around. Fantira is to Esti Makaliki. So yeah, here we go. It's literally going to be a walk-on, guys. Never thought I'd say this on this trip, but this one is one that eats the crowds up. Just uses like a pulley system to pull the boats around the track. Um, but yeah, it does actually. Now you say. But yeah, we're going to be jumping on this one. We use some on-ride footage. It's good to get on Feta Morgana there, to enjoy it. it. It's like one of those rides that like neither of us really follow because we never really like read a thousand and one nights or know much about it, but I think that's what it's about. Uh, you know, like Tale of Sinbad and all that sort of thing. Uh, we're going to be heading over to Max and Moritz now, which are the two Mac Rise dueling coasters, which we've got if the you only have time for one, go for Moritz. Which is the green track, yes, it's, it's, like, it's not a lot in here, but it is better. Hopefully they're running it to full capacity today, as last time we came. Max was running at half capacity, which nearly cost us the credit, but we would have got it today. So let's get over there now and get our next ride done. Right, so Max and Moritz next. Here's the station, obviously utilising the old Bob station, um, as this was the old. Um, I, no, it was an Intamin. Bob said nearly said Mac rides. It was a, a, an Intamin one, very old and uh, a bit clunky. Now I was fortunate enough to ride that. Louise didn't get to. I, I rode it when I came it with Lewis. It was closed when we came for extended maintenance, then I came with Lewis and managed to do just before, I think a couple of weeks before it closed. Um, so yeah, that's a shame that you never got a chance to ride it, but I mean... It's really rapid. Yeah, so we, we haven't done that in quite a while either. Um, but yeah, Max and Moritz next. And then we're going to have a look at the new bakery thing they've opened for um, Dance Macabre, which is just around the corner. So yeah, Max and Moritz can get quite a long queue as you can tell here. Even when we came last time, it had well over a 45 minute queue. It was queuing right back to here. So it's a quite good to see that it's going to be almost a walk on. Uh, as Louise said earlier, two tracks. Max is the blue one, Moritz is the green one. And uh, they are pretty similar. Our personal preference is Moritz, which is the green one. Lots of interactive elements in the queue, including these whoopee cushions. 
So if you interact with you can make them fart. Everyone likes a bit of farting. <laughs> That was so <laughs> legit. Yeah, legit. And uh, as you probably heard, that wasn't a fake one either. <laughs> anyway, guys, we'll see you on the rides. We're basically going to be walking on this. No joke, it's so quiet. afternoon snack nipped into the bakery crumble or crumble's bakery uh louise went for this like caramel biscuit thing which is like a cake it is squishy and i went for a lemon curd cake which comes with whipped cream the, the choice of the day or something oh fair enough and then i uh, just got a couple of drinks with it but yeah we're gonna dig, dig oh into this God. is that a choco mail i haven't had one mail. in so long <laughs> anyway i'm gonna dig down to these and um but you know what we think there you go you're gonna try it on camera Dry, but nice flavour. <laughs> I didn't even drink the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Louise gave me the bottle to go to the bin, which is over there. I get up, I trip over the bench. On your and white t-shirt as well, your special t-shirt. Oh, I've got the uh, the travel wash <laughs> side. Right, so now we've stopped off, and I have now got chocolate down me. You know, the thing is, it wasn't even mine. Yeah. Right. Just, I suppose it isn't as bad as it looks. Well, so that's what tricky down me. Well, I just tripped on the bench, that's all. But like, yeah, I'm plastered in it now. Anyway, we're gonna go over to a Baron 1898 or Baron if you wanna hear me butchering the Dutch language. Um, we are gonna wait for the front on this one because you get to choose your row, don't you? Yeah. Two or three or one. Uh, it's advertising a 10 minute queue at the moment, so. I'm more than happy with that, you know, considering we waited 45 minutes last and then time. We're gonna go on the boat ride. The rapids. Piranha. No, the rapids. Oh, the, the, the gondolas. Okay, fair enough, I'm fine with that. Right, so as we leave the area of Max and Maurice behind us, we're actually able to see a new area. This wasn't open last time we came. It is the Tavern in the Swash Cat, which um, I think it means the, the den of the black cat, basically and uh, it's, it's like a quick service bakery sort of thing so we're looking here and uh, yeah this is going to be part of dance macabre uh, around the back there but yeah it looks cool so yeah you can get yourself donuts all that sort of thing actually they look really good a bit like a petrol station to be quite honest it sells that sort of stuff um if you get my grass but yeah like yogurts they look really good actually 
salads. If you want some tomatoes, though, you can get them here as well. Some ice creams. The ice creams they've got is a bit frosty in there. Magnums. All boring ones. Sorry. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. Yeah, pretty cool what they got made here. It's all self checkout if you want. So <laughs> there was so on the bakery items there they're exposed and there was a bee eating the honey of one of the cinnamon ones. Yeah, you get yourself coffee and all that, they're all priced up here. Do you want the hot chocolate though? So yeah, also some themed toilets here for Dance Macabre. Really high level of theme and as you'd expect and then the construction site of Dance Macabre back here. Which uh, might be able to get a little view over the fence, just pop the camera over like so. Looks like some females going in, but yeah. It's good enough right now, right? So we waited in total about 25 minutes for Baron 1898 there. We only waited longer because we went for the front row, which was well worth it, wasn't it? God, I do front there. row again. Uh, again. We enjoyed the front row, yeah? yeah but yeah, if we went on like second or third row, we would have gone it within five minutes, I reckon. Uh, anyway, we're going to head over towards Louise's favourite, the um, Flying Dutchman, which is the uh, water coaster we started the day on, and then maybe go George and the Dragon. Um, I'd like to get Louise on Python, but she's not I too keen on it. I still need to do this boat one. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. So yeah, we're going to head over into the trees now to the Flying Dutchman. So it's definitely roller coaster corner over here. What with Flying Dutchman, Python, and George and the Dragon, four coasters in this corner. Just said to Louise, I think the queue is going to be quite long for this one, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what it's like. I think based on everything else, it's going to be no longer than 20 minutes. But the good thing about this one is it's very much a, a show splash. Like it looks good, whatever. looks good from the outside, but actually from the inside, it's not too bad at all. Um, it looks like at the moment it's just queuing out the door, so you're maybe talking 20 minutes for that. Um, so yeah, would you want to do this one again, Lou? Mm -hmm. It's up next to see the Flying Dutchman. I won't bother with Pov again, guys, so we'll see you after the ride. Yeah. 
So we wait 25 minutes there for Flying Dutchman and uh, I'm trying to get Louise to go on the uh, Python roller coaster but she doesn't seem to want to which is a bit of a shame because it was really tracked, it's very smooth now. She says she wants to sit it out and I'll go on it so it'll be up next for me. I'm going to leave Louise down here in the lovely lagoon area for Flying Dutchman. I've never actually been down here. But yeah, I'll give it a bash because I haven't actually been on it since 2019. Uh, yeah, it must have been 2019. Actually, tell a lie, I haven't been on it since 2018 when I went with you because it broke down when me and Lewis tried to go on it in 2019. So it'd be my first ride in five years on this. Yeah, the weather's had a complete change of heart. It's like been warm today, but look at this beautiful blue skies. And uh, yeah, it's only 6.30, so we'll be looking for food after this. waited about 10 minutes for Python there because I didn't go down the uh, single word line. It's a bit silly of me because like I'm so used to getting in the queue here it's just like in and I was like halfway down the queue I was like oh yeah they got single rider line so I should have really used that but I didn't. Uh, anyway we're gonna find some food now aren't we though because we had a bit peckish. There is burgers there apparently. So that is the, the burger house. You can have a look there it smells nice. Uh, Fading out we're gonna go around to the front of the park where they have the burger bakery down the front. Let's have a look. So we found a little burger place just by Python's entrance, little like grill place. We actually got a burger and drink for 19 euros, which is a bit pricey, but it looks amazing. I wish I was looking like that. Bear in mind they make it fresh in front of you. I think that's quite nice looking. What does it taste like? It's not too bad, you know. Obviously, you know, it's a theme park burger, but it's alright. The one thing that I do find with is you can't buy that. chips at the same stand, which I find weird. Maybe they don't like chips with their burgers. But yeah, we're going to chow down to this and then carry on all day with some of the slower rides like the gondolas and um, maybe go around to Carnival Symbolica. Festival, Symbolica again, definitely, so yeah. Right, so with some food down us now, uh, we're going to head off towards the little gondola boats around the lake um, and then we're going to get some of our final attractions in. Yeah. Yeah, they're just doing something with water cannons over by this stage. I just said to Louise, I was like, we're still clear of here because I've got the camera. Yeah. So yeah, I love the Python's stage here. Like that's fake track. It looks so cool. So I actually really like the offerings they've got for the summer. There's so much entertainment, isn't there? Like there's plenty to do at the Efteling anyway. But the amount of stuff that like, we haven't seen before is just incredible. 
So yeah, along with the entertainment, you obviously got a lot of shops as well, which I really love with lots of variety. And I've just spotted they sell Tony's chocolate here. I love this stuff. It's like the best chocolate out there. And it's made here in the, in the Netherlands. So it only took five minutes, if that, to get on the gondola boats. Yeah around the lake. Yeah, plenty of ducks around here. So they are not in short supply of ducks as you can see in the shot here. Kind of just like everywhere. Though the ducks here don't really harass people for food because I think they get fed on the Where shore. Where were we? Was it Energylandia? Uh, I think it was, yeah it was. Yeah that and the one at Wallaby Belgium. The boat ride like this at Wallaby yeah. Belgium. The mosquitoes and the ducks just harassing for I food. I mean they are coming over. But that yeah was. they're curious but they're like you know there's no food left. There's no teenage ducks here as we saw earlier. We saw some like adolescent ducks that weren't quite babies. But yeah, this is a lovely boat ride. Just goes all the way around the lake. And uh, apparently it takes 20 minutes, but we timed it. It was about 15 last time we went on it. Check but I don't want to say anything, but I think it's running slower. Mm. So it might be the full 20 minutes. After this, we're going to go on. on. <laughs> I suppose they can change the speed. Mm -hmm. We'll go on Symbolica after this to the Heroes Tour. And uh, we decided at nine o'clock we're going to go see the show, which is the last one of the night. Um, yeah. Twenty minutes long. See the flaming horse bum with, you know, the darkness encasing. So, mm -hmm. we'll enjoy this ride. Give you some shots, and we'll see you afterwards. Right, so since we've been on the gondolas now, we also did Symbolica. Uh, we did the Heroes Tour, which was real good fun. I love that tour. That much of a queue. No, it wasn't. It was about 15 minutes in total. Normally, you just have to wait long because of the pre show. That's the only reason the queue can be a bit longer. But we're now heading around towards the, um, the, the, the show, the Ravel and the Gingin horses. show. I'm not even going to bother because I can't pronounce it. I don't even know what it is. And they don't do the dinner show. The no, so they're not running it the two days we're here. They have two days off a week, Tuesday and Wednesday, oh. and they're the only days we're here. So that's a shame. Look, there's a donut place. So we're going to head over there now. We're not going to have time to do Jerome uh, Vlux beforehand, but we might do it afterwards. We're going to nip into one of the shops along here, and then we'll Fair see enough. you at the show. Hopefully we'll get a nice seat. So as we approach over to the area of the park where the show is, here's the main entrance to the Fairytale Forest, which we're going to do tomorrow, aren't we, Lou? Yeah, might do a separate video on just the Fairytale Forest, because it is quite a good walk. We haven't done it all the way through, and we're we going to dedicate like some time. In the yeah, it'd be quite pleasant. Well, not early, because we're going to have a bit of a lay-in tomorrow. But yeah, the shop we want to look in is over here, because they actually sell like miniature models of some of the Fairytale uh, yeah, creatures. Yeah. And with the souvenir like landscape we got last time we were here, we really want a few of the statues for a shelf that sits below it. Right, so here we are in St Nicholas's Plaza. Because we're going to go. Lives. Yeah, well, apparently so. Santa is a fairy. Like I say, we're going to look at the name of this show and see whether I can pronounce it. Because, like, I know it's Ravel something, but that's about it. It starts in 15 minutes, so hopefully we get a seat. I do like the lighting here, it's very well done. Rave the gin. Oh, wow. There we go, it's a good job I didn't trigger those as they're going past <laughs> the camera. Brave, so yeah, brave, brave. let's grab a seat and get some highlights from the show.
highlights from the Ravelgin show, so you've never pronounced that right. I think I'm butchering it. I think it's easier than what we're trying to oh, you know, God, yeah. say. Oh, God, yeah. But yeah, I thought that was a pretty good show. They have changed it a bit since we last saw it in 2018, obviously. No flaming horse butt. Maybe that wasn't meant to happen and the horse was just generally on fire. No, because he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but still a very good show nonetheless. I do feel like there's not enough going on for the size of the arena, but thankfully it was I quite a quiet show. You know what I thought? I thought, if, you know the dinner and food part of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dinner and food. Yeah. Dinner and show part of it. I thought they didn't get a great view. Obviously there was no one there. I think there's, there's other parts to it, but yeah. There like, must be, but obviously it was all directed to the main audience, which is a different part of the arena. Definitely. But still, I thought it was a very good show, good effects on it. Yeah, cool. And uh, yeah, we're going to head over to the shops now. We're in the last half an hour of operations for the park before it closes at 10 o'clock. It is still quite busy, but I suppose it's just kicking out from the show. So we've decided we're not going to do any more rides now. We're just going to head through the shops and get out a little bit earlier because we do have to get a bus back to Denbosch. Yeah, we um, were staying on site then. Oh yeah, totally different. But we're back here tomorrow for a second day. I'm not going to vlog the second day. So um, yeah, let's go have a look in some of the shops. So have a look at this. I must say, like, we, we have been to Efteling quite a few times now. We've never seen it at night, have we, Lou? Never. Never, ever. And, like, this park lights up a tree. It is absolutely gorgeous. I kind of want to see if the fairy tale forest is lit up. But... I imagine it is. Of course, it is it's still open. But, yeah, have a look at that. Symbolic and looks spectacular. I've got to get a picture of that. So, yeah, we're coming to the entrance of the park now. We're going to have a quick look in the shop. And uh, yeah, we're going to be saying goodbye, but have a look at this, like, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, subtle lighting, but even like rides like Feta Morgana, it's all lit up. And it's the one thing I love about these European parks, they're so well lit, because they're open late very frequently. Right guys, so there is merely 15 minutes left of the park day and we decided to call it. I'm not fussed about seeing the light show, we'll probably watch that tomorrow but it won't be for the vlog. You can just see the entrance behind me all lit up. Had a really good day, what about you, Lou? Three battery changes. Oh my god, this is this, 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 no, I haven't changed the memory card, but this, this is 128 gigs, so I'd be surprised if I needed to change that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Efteling never fails to surprise us. It's a brilliant park. And there's always something that you've missed. Like I said, we're back here tomorrow. Um, not going to vlog it. Might have a little short video through the Fairytale Forest. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, guys, if you're in the Netherlands or planning to come here, it's definitely a park to come to. It's probably in the top 10, easily in the top 10, in fact. Very family of European oriented parks. and like so catering towards small, young children as oh, well. Oh, God, yeah, because it is for the whole family. Like, like you can bring your baby here. You can bring your grandparents here, there's stuff for everyone. <laughs> your granny and your baby if you want. Because <laughs> I know some parks you can go to and it's just like, oh, well, the grandparents are looking after the baby. It's like, well, yeah, but there are literally like rides like Drumvlucht and all that. We can actually take the baby on there, which I find incredible. Oh, yeah. the pagode, yeah. And like in the UK, you'd have height restrictions on that. But yeah, guys, going to sign the vlog off here. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and we will see you on our next vlog, which is going to be Toverland, where the weather is forecast to be frightful. So we'll see you then. Bye.